Let every man be swift to hear and slow to anger. For the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. Wherefore, casting away all uncleanness and abundance of naughtiness with meekness, receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Words taken from the epistle for this fourth Sunday after Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The world today is not listening to God. They are instead tuning him out with a deluge of media, radio, iPads, iPods, Internet, and of course, who can forget, smartphones. As a result, almost every man of our times is slow to hear, slow to hear, and swift to anger. On Pentecost Sunday, St. Peter preached one sermon, and 3,000 men converted. They were open to the Holy Ghost. They were open to the Holy Ghost, and they responded. Now we can preach 3,000 sermons, and hardly a soul converts. Why is this? Today, man is giving in to all sorts of uncleanness and an abundance of naughtiness. Once again, the mass media, Hollywood, news blogs, internet, you name it, provide for this in abundance in almost every movie and on nearly every website. As a result, the word of God, which is able to save, able to save man's soul, is not easily engrafted. And as St. James notes, anger rises up. And worketh in the world, anger, uncleanness, and naughtiness, these go together. With such deafness and uncleanness, anger and rage are becoming a normal reaction to the various difficulties in our time. For those who have ears to hear, the weather is mirroring, is reflecting this inner state of man. The weather is more and more passionate, more and more angry. Now, given this little summary of the state of affairs, let us spend some time this morning trying to understand the vice of anger. The vice of anger. We turn to the desert fathers and the doctors and the fathers, and we will find many things about this particular vice. So here we go. Let's turn to St. John Cassian. He went down to the deserts of Egypt and he talked to all these desert fathers and took notes. He wrote these long books. He died in the year 434. St. John Cassian tells us from the fathers in the desert that anger is a deadly poison that must be totally uprooted from the depths of our soul. For as long as it resides in our hearts and blinds our mind's eye with its harmful darkness, we shall not be able to acquire the judgment of proper discretion, nor to possess a good contemplation or good contemplative vision or a mature counsel. Thank you, John Cashin. Anger brings blindness. It brings darkness to our judgment. Scripture says, my eye has been disturbed by anger. Anger makes us see things wrongly. It disturbs our eyes, leading us to draw unjust conclusions, make rash judgments, give way to suspicion, which in turn leads us to make bad choices for ourselves and give bad advice to others. That's the way it is. No wonder St. James says, the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. The anger of man worketh not the justice of God. So a great danger then of this vice is this. This is it. The angry man always, without exception, just about, always thinks he's in the right. That's why he's mad, for heaven's sakes. Always thinks he's right. And this makes it very difficult to correct an angry man. God had to unhorse St. Paul, who was angry on the way to Damascus, and blind him even 
for a time to help him overcome his anger. Truly, anger is a deadly poison. And this is why there is a final judgment. Angry man always thinks he's right and God's going to show him in the end, you were wrong. And this is why the Holy Ghost must come to convict us, as our Lord said in the gospel this morning. Now, anger is a capital sin. It's a fount of sin, a fountain of evil. So it produces other sins. That's what a capital vice means. So as a capital vice and a deadly poison, anger opens the door of the soul to additional sins. This is why St. Paul says the sun should not go down on your anger and you should not give place to the devil. St. John Cassian writes, certainly the mind rightfully called a sun. Remember, St. Paul says the sun should not go down on your anger. St. John Cassian, he's saying the mind rightfully called a sun. Why? Because it surveys all the thoughts and judgments of the heart. It must not be extinguished by the vice of anger. Otherwise, when it goes down and the darkness of disturbances, along with their author, the devil, occupies all our heart's understanding, and we have been possessed by the darkness of anger, as if we were in the depths of the night, he says, here it is, we shall not know how we are to act. We shall not know how we are to act. Thank you, St. John, Cassian. We will easily commit sins as if we were drunk when under the influence of anger. We will gossip. We will exaggerate everything. We will fall into impurity. We will fall into indulgence, drink too much, whatever it is. Listen to St. John Cash in another place. He says, for as a person progresses in mildness and patience of heart, so also does he in purity of body. And the further he has driven away the passion of anger, the more tightly will he hold on to chastity. Many people suffering from problems of impurity today. Why? Because they're angry. Solve your anger problem. You might well solve the other one. Also, anger easily compounds and leads to more anger. We get angry for being angry. Haven't you ever been angry for being angry? St. Therese did. She says, I was mad for being mad. Thus, to leave oneself in the hands of anger is a very dangerous thing. You might as well mount a furious horse that refuses to obey the bit, it will end up carrying you wheresoever, whithersoever it pleases. Now further, anger that is not dealt with in a virtuous manner leads to resentment. Resentment, bitter memories. St. John Cashin refers to this as brooding over the offense in the heart or digesting of the offense within ourselves in glum silence. Brooding. Glum silence. We've experienced this, I'm sure. It's horrible, like a spider in a web. This is why anger turned inwards, not dealt with properly, leads to what? Depression, sadness, even despair. St. John says such suppressed anger in one's heart excludes the splendid radiance of the Holy Ghost. In other words, it prevents prayer and contemplation. I'm not going to pray. I'm mad. I get even. Listening to God and responding to his word, as St. James says, is necessary to save our souls. Isn't going to happen easily. And this is why St. Aloysius Gonzaga says so well. In troubled water, the devil always finds fish to catch. And angry waters, he's catching big fish. Clearly, anger is a deadly poison. The saints go so far as to say to yield to anger is never profitable to ourselves or to others. Never profitable. If it produce no other evil, it at least robs us of peace. The disturbance of mind to which we give way on account of the maltreatment we receive from others or the injustice 
we perceive in some situation is more hurtful to us than the injuries offered to us. Seneca put it like this. My anger will hurt me more than their insults. My anger will hurt me more than their insults. Thus, he who indulges anger when an affront is offered to him is a cause of pain to himself. St. Augustine says, Thou hast decreed, O Lord, that the soul that is inordinate should be its own torment. Thus, St. Francis de Sales teaches that no matter how just the reason for our anger, but Father, I'm under righteous anger. No matter how just the reason for our anger, says St. Francis, it is always expedient to restrain it. St. Augustine says that once anger enters the soul, it is difficult to expel it. And so he exhorts us to close the door to anger so that it cannot enter. St. John Cashin goes on to say the same. Patience does not achieve its goal in righteous anger. It consists rather in not getting angry at all. Listen to the advice of St. Francis de Sales. He says, if possible, never become angry and always reject any pretext for allowing anger to gain admission to your heart. Because once again, once it gets flared up, who's going to come bring it in? St. John Cashin goes on. He says the perfect medicine for this disease is that we realize first that in no way are we permitted to get angry. These are saints speaking here. In no way, in no way are we permitted to get angry, whether for an unjust or a just cause, knowing that we shall at once lose the light of discretion and firm and correct counsel, as well as goodness itself and the restraints of righteousness. If the guiding principle of our heart is obscured by darkness, and then that purity of our mind will soon be driven out, it can never become a temple of the Holy Ghost as long as the spirit of wrath dwells in us. What's he saying? Flee, run from this. And commenting on the passage from the Scripture that says, be angry, but do not sin which St. Paul also quotes. It's from the Psalms. St. Augustine says this, be angry at sin and at past sins. If you want to be angry at something, be angry at sin. And your own sins to start with. In this way, we avoid getting angry at people and at ourselves by which we lose our peace. If we do get angry, Let us use up that anger on something good. We all get angry. This is why we're trying to give you a sermon today. If we didn't have this problem, why would I be preaching on it? We all get angry. Let's use it up. Let's do something good with it. Let's channel it. I'm getting mad. I better go clean the garage. Channel it to overcoming sin and putting more order in our lives rather than less. Another way we can solve the problem is doing exactly what you're doing right now. Drawing near to the blood of His Majesty Jesus Christ. It's one of the surest ways of conquering anger. There's a basic principle about our Lord's blood and the killing of others, whether it be in our mental facilities, I wish you were dead kind of thought, or an actual killing. And here it is. If we do not receive his blood and participate in his passion through the mass, we will end up shedding the blood of others. If we do not shed the blood of Christ as he has given it to us to do in a certain manner in the mass, then we will shed each other's blood. There will be wars, there'll be murders. Thus, it's obvious the more the world turns away from the mass, the more angry and violent it will become. What does St. Paul tell us? His blood is our peace. In his blood is our peace. This is why St. Paul says in another place, peace through the blood of his cross. He made peace through the blood of his cross. 
Thus, frequent attendance at Holy Mass can calm an angry soul, especially if they pray well during the consecration and following. This thought is captured in the prayers at the foot of the altar, where we find the solution to our souls when they are cast down by our worldly problems, that we should take heart, be hopeful, and go unto the altar of God to recover the joy of our youth. Why are you cast down, my soul? Hope in God. Come to the altar of God. There it is. Beautiful. And here we can also think of a saint, St. Januarius. He was a bishop of Naples who was martyred under Diocletian in the year 305. He was the first, he was at first cast to the wild beasts. They wouldn't touch him, they would not kill him. Think about it. When a man is calm, the beasts are often calm toward him. They represented the inner calm that existed in this saintly bishop. Sometimes the beast would even lick the feet and the hands of these people they were supposed to kill because they were so calm they had met their match. They could not kill him, so they beheaded him. Since he was greatly revered, the people gathered up his blood in a vial and kept his relics, and we have them to this day. Amazingly, ever since the year at least 1389, on his feast day, which is September 19th, Whenever the blood in these vials is brought in proximity to his head, the blood liquefies and even boils or bubbles. This has been studied by scientists and it defies all explanation. This miracle teaches us something interesting, such as we are to get our bodies back someday. When the blood of this saint comes next to his bones on his birthday into heaven, the sign occurs, hint, hint. In other words, the blood will flow again in his glorified body. It also shows that the saints are very much alive and well in heaven. But more in keeping with our topic today, I think it is very significant. Have you ever had your blood boiling in anger? Don't we say when someone's angry, his blood is boiling, it's bubbling if this boiling blood is not kept under control by a cool head, it can easily become like a volcano. It should be used up in some way that is constructive. If not, it invades the rational powers and enlists them to do something spiteful or revengeful. Once again, gossip, exaggerate offenses, and so on. We do something bad. We break free and break down from people's relationships. And St. Januarius is invoked as a protector from volcanoes, by the way, since he has protected Naples from Mount Vesuvius on more than one occasion. So maybe we could call on St. Januarius when our blood boils and we're about to erupt into who knows what. St. Januarius shows us we need a cool head to control boiling blood. The coolest head is that of Christ, and he can be found at the Mass. Bring your boiling blood to the Mass. Now, the corollary to this is that we should also meditate frequently on the Passion, especially in the Rosary and the Stations of the Cross. Perhaps you know the story of the Trappist monk who suffered terribly from anger, retold in the book, The Man Who Got Even With God by Father Raymond, who was an abbot at Trappist Monastery in Gethsemane. Once this young man, very angry with his father, living in Kentucky, burned down his father's tobacco barn filled with that year's crop. That's how mad he was. And then he ran away. But after some years of calming down, he heard the voice of God. He heard the Word of God. And he entered the Trappist in Gethsemane. But his troubles with anger did not end there because he almost cut the throat of the abbot while shaving him with a straight razor. His job was to cut the hair and shave. And the abbot was berating him, and he was like holding himself back. That's how angry he could get. He got so mad at his fellow monks once, when they were out in the field, that he returned early to the barn to wait for them with a pitchfork. He was going to get them. 
Needless to say, they did not go into the barn. Well, how did this angry monk solve his problem? Frequent meditation upon the passion, most especially frequently praying the rosary and saying the stations of the cross. He conquered himself. Let us do the same. Not give way to anger, but bring our boiling blood into contact with the infinitely cool head of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. For the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.